What's up guys? So today I'm going to be doing a walk around of my 1997 Forerunner and I'll showcase all the mods that have been done to it. I'll probably get you know a little bit of crap for this in the comments but this is pretty much bought not built so I'll throw a picture up right now of what it looked like back when we got it. So of course everything else that's been done since that picture uh, we've done it ourselves here but all the main stuff the lift and all that was already on it so you know oh well. But anyway, I'll start out up front with the uh, Truckworks front bumper. So this is a powder-coated black bumper. It's really sturdy. I do like the design of it. Uh, personally, I probably would have gotten a different bumper if it was my choice, but it does look great still, and it is very durable. I mean, as you can see right here, the previous owners hit a cow. So, you know, it goes. it shows that it is a pretty good durable bumper. It did protect it quite a bit did shift the entire bumper over so it's kind of offset on both sides but I don't really care um, so inside of it is a smitty built synthetic rope winch I'm not really sure what the part number is uh, but I've only I've never had to actually use it uh, for like real I've just used it for fun sometimes and it does have a little controller that uh, goes inside I'll show you the little opening spot in the interior there so moving on, we've got these Oxbeam ditch lights, they're LEDs. I'll go ahead and turn them on for you and show you them. So there you go. You can see they are pretty bright, and I mean these are pretty cheap little pods, and they do give off plenty of light. I don't believe it's you know legal to drive with these things on, especially because they're so high and it would blind other drivers. I don't really use them that much, but I have them if I need them, and they work really good. So next we're going to go to the lift, which is the Toytec Ultimate Lift. Uh, I've got the Bilstein shocks on it. I can't really say I've got the Bilstein shocks because this was all done by the previous owner. But there it is. It is a 3 inch lift. It does, you know, lift the, the truck a good amount. It gives you plenty of travel and stuff. It is a pretty stiff ride. Uh, but you know, it's probably a pretty old one. Pretty old lift, pretty old shocks. So it's okay. And attached to the lift there is the... Goodyear Dura Tracks. They are mud terrain tires, so of course they have good traction. Um, but these are 285, 75, 16s. So, you know, pretty decent size. I really do like the offset, or you know, whatever you call it, the stance, how it sticks out of the fender a little bit. I think it looks really good. So, that's the tires. They work great. They are pretty expensive. I just put um, two new back ones on. I don't know how long ago, but costed like $500, $500 right around there. So pre pretty expensive tires, but they do uh, wear pretty well and they're not too terribly loud, like on highway driving and stuff, they're not too bad. Um, so next, I gotta go underneath here. We're, so the sway bar end link bushings are Moog and energy suspension bushings. And the inner CV axles were rebuilt uh, with Beck Arnley boots and Redline grease. And then royal, uh, royal Purple is being used in the transfer case and diff. Uh, this is actually something my dad and I did. It's kind of hard to see. We got a new steering rack from Detroit Axle. And we put new um, lower control arm bushings, polyurethane bushings. Not really sure what the brand is, I forget. Uh, we put new ball joints on, all that stuff while we were down there. The old stuff got destroyed by the valve cover gasket leak. Leaked down onto it. So next... Uh, you know, not terribly a mod, really, but uh, the fender liner got all taken out when they hit the cow, uh, and I just got, it drove me crazy how it was slinging up all the mud and crap into the door, door sill and door jam there, so I just bought a couple of, uh, whatever they're called, mud flaps from O'Reilly's, and just kind of rigged them up in there. It works pretty good. So, there's that, and then... Up top, we've got the roller roof rack. That's something I did, of course. Uh, it was It's pretty cheap. I have a video up on my channel kind of doing a review of it. And it's a really nice roof rack. It's held up super well, and I really do think it completes the look of this 4Runner. It looks great on it. So there's that. And then I've got the uh, windows tinted. Got 35% on the fronts and 5% on the entire rest of the vehicle. Really nice. Makes the truck look a lot sleeker or whatever the word would be. Um, it's kind of hard to see at night. So next would be the LED ditch lights down 
in the bottom here they are rewired they are wired to the reverse lights I'll show a little clip of that here then we've got a CB radio I'll show that inside but this is the cord for it in the back it goes pretty high up there so next on the exterior and this is pretty much the final thing on the outside is going to be the Plasti Dip all around so you've got uh, all the badges and then this whole trunk plate piece right here was all Plasti Dipped along with the emblem going uh, up to the front the entire front grill piece was all painted uh, Plasti Dipped, I don't know why it's so loose got glitter on that one, not really a big fan <laughs> of that and then of course the wheels and they are in pretty rough shape. I'm going to need to redo these or paint these at some point. Or, you know, I've needed to do it forever. Just haven't gotten around to it. And then, other than that, uh, it's just a bunch of stickers. Got the Texas Toyota Coalition one. Sticker bomb the roof rack. Uh, wind visor thing right there. Up front we got the Hoonigan sticker. Got the Bilstein ones. And got the Marlin Crawlers ones. These ones look terrible. Got the Moab sticker. Yoda Overlanders. Toy Tech and Truckworks ones. All the you know more delicate or you know more intricate stickers have been put on by the previous owner. I just stuck the little gas station stickers on because it's easy. This one was a pain though. It came in a big white white rectangle. I had to cut cut it out with an exacto, but it works. So that's pretty much it for the exterior here. Now let's go ahead and look under the hood. So under the hood of this vehicle, of course it's not going to be too much performance oriented or any of that. Uh, we do have the deck plate mod done, which is really nice. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, you just get a little like deck plate for a boat after you drill a hole in the airbox and you can seal it up, it's watertight, or you can have it open. It does give it a little bit more noise, I think, and you know maybe a little bit of a performance gain. Um, so yeah, there's that, and then I do have a Flowmaster 50 series, I'll put a clip of that. do like it I think it sounds good you know not ricey at all nice and deep so we do have an underhood PA speaker kind of associated with the dash with the uh, CB radio in there right here the last owner took out the heater control valve box thing uh, he said that those will fail and start leaking coolant everywhere so just put a little brass piece and put the hoses on it um, next put some new NGK wires on it uh, just like last week and then put uh, some new spark plugs in I have the part number right here you can see it so it does say right there I need these twin ground electrode ones but the last owner told me there's no point in getting them uh, that these single electrode ones work just as good and they're easy to easier to work with and just overall better um, so there's that we do run uh, or I do run shell Rotella 15w40 in this a great oil I run it in pretty much anything I have um, so there's that I'm not really sure what brand this transmission oil cooler is but this is like I said the transmission oil cooler and it bypasses the radiator so nice high quality one so that's pretty much it for the you know engine and performance stuff so let's go ahead and move on to the inside so in here we've got the little switch for the aux beams there and then just got some basic things, steering wheel cover, fuzzy dice, eject button, uh, vanity plate there. All these were actually graduation gifts, um, and I've been called the tan man for, like, since I was little, so that's got custom made. I don't use, it's not legal or anything, I just stuck it on the windshield because I like it up there. But anyway, um, got the CB radio right here, with the PA speaker in it, um, and then we've got the Alpine head unit right here. You have Rockford Fosgate uh, dash speakers and Infinity door speakers, and the sound quality on this is just terrible. There's no bass or anything, and the previous owner told me it just kind of comes down to this being an old head unit. So you know, I think if I replaced it, then I'd get uh, you know good audio out of those speakers. But there's that. We've got WeatherTech floor liners throughout the entire interior. Definitely a good investment. These things work great. In the back, the little heater control valve thingy down there. The last owner took that one out too. Um, so it just blows air back there. And there's a the little thing like I was saying earlier to plug in for the winch cable. Yeah, that's pretty much a rundown of all the mods that have been done to this thing. Um, 
yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.